Hey guys, it's Stell back here with you, bringing you some Ground War Domination on Villa. Uh, this particular match was started out pretty interesting, started out, out pretty hot and heavy, um, but then my, my team, which is pretty much almost a full team, finally took over and uh, secured the win here. But I wanted to continue a couple of things that I started in the previous video. Well, first off, I'm back from Boston. Great trip. Um, I was amazed. I've been there a few times, but not not when I'm at this age. I haven't been there like in ten years. Um, but I was amazed how much smaller of a city Boston and the surrounding area was compared to Chicago. Chicago is just a sprawling, you know, epicenter. Um, the tallest building in in, in um, Boston probably had no more than forty or fifty floors, where that's chunk change in Chicago. Um, so th that that just gave me an idea how big it was, but it was a cool, very cool city, very cool stadium. They do a lot of neat things that I wish Wrigley would do, or and they do a couple of things that I don't want Wrigley to do. Um, uh, but I got some pictures to show you guys. I'll show you guys when I get the cameras at my dad's house, and uh, especially this guy. They call him Euclidus. I don't know what it is. U they call him U at, at the stadium, and he has this really weird batting stance. And I'm sure you baseball guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, it looks like he has to pee. He has his knees together, legs together, and he dances on the ball of his toes until he has, um, until he gets his swing. He wants to do his swing, but he holds the bat really weird. So I'll show you those and a little bit of Fenway Park. If you haven't seen Fenway Park, I have some things for that, and I'll show you guys that in my next video. Uh, but I want to continue my talk uh, about Modern Warfare 3 and Battlefield 3 and the possible... You know, dethroning of the Call of Duty series. Uh, there's a couple of things. Right now, I think this is prime time. If there was, ever was a game to take over the reign of Call of Duty, uh, the series, it would be right now. Black Ops is, I mean, let's face it, I know there's guys that will probably hate on me for saying it, but it is the weakest of all the, the Call of Duties. Um, you know, Call of Duty, Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare 2, and then Black Ops. I'm not including. Um, uh, World at War because that didn't have to do anything to do with this particular storyline. But for those three games, Black Ops is the weakest. However, Black Ops does a few things that I, I hope they still they keep in the game. Like theater mode, I think is awesome. I, I don't think they're going to keep that. Honestly, I don't know how many people actually still use that anymore. Uh, I know us uh, commentators do. I know I do sometimes. And, but even now, I find myself recording the gameplay straight from the match um, versus recording the match in you know have the system record it and then I record it later. I, I don't seem to do that anymore. I usually just do it on the fly. Um, I love combat uh, mode. Uh, the whole training thing, private match that you can do. I usually set it on the highest 10,000 points, team death match, and just let it go. I wish there was a random feature that you could have on the maps and just so you can have it just constantly going. Um, but that's fine. I think it's a great, great tool, especially when you want to work on things. Like I'm here, I'm trying, just trying to work on my drop shotting. I'm not very good at it, but I, I do it a couple of times, especially in the other video that I'll post later. Um, also, to the jump thing where you jump um, from out of sight, so out of sight, and you fuck up their aiming. They're thinking you're going to aim right across down there, but you jump over their gun or you jump over their line of sight, and you get them. Uh, I will do that. I try to do that here a couple of times. Uh, I'm pretty good at it. I'm okay. Not, nothing great about it, but I'm okay. Um, but combat mode is is a great place to practice these things and not hurt your KD. Um, or not hurt your stats, overall stats, actually, not just your KD. So there are a great, couple of great things that, call, that Black Ops does have, but there are a lot of things Black Ops, I feel, have done uh, to bring the series down a notch or two. And if Battlefield 3 makes sure that they do a few things, which I mostly discussed in the previous video, maps, multiple maps, and not making them too big, um, or, or, or at least have enough things in the way to make it all interesting. Uh, also, too, it has to be as smooth or smooth. Well, maybe not too. That's cool. It got dinged in the dome with a canister and it was already it, it hurt and it killed me. I thought it was pretty funny. Um, Make it, you know, pretty much as smooth as this game. If it does not, that's the, probably the biggest thing. If it does not have the smoothness of, of this game, then it's not gonna, it's not gonna, do it. Um, the maps, and then more map, you know, multiple maps. Not just having five maps. Not just having eight maps. You need to have 14 maps, and even that for some people is not enough. Um, so, those are the kind of things that, that Battlefield 3 needs to do, um, to, to try to overcome the Call of Duty series. 
Now, let's face it, too. Battlefield 3 is not your typical first-person shooter. It is more broader than that. You're able to do a lot more things in it. It is not... It's not this. Um, you, you have to really play it to understand it. But you can be in airplanes. You can be if they're ships. At least in the old ones, you can be in ships. You can be in jeeps. You can do this. You can do that. So there are a lot more things for them to do. And there's usually a lot more people in the matches. And there is usually a hierarchy command. Uh, especially for clans. They'll have a commander who gives orders. Uh, like, and I don't know if they're going to do what they did in MAG, where, you know, they, the, the commander would set certain objectives, you know, go here, capture this point, go here, do that, secure this area, and if you did that, um, you got points um, towards your experience and things like that. So there's an incentive for all that. I don't know if Battlefield 3 is going to do that, um, but that's okay. Now... This is the other thing. This is the thing that Black Ops does do very well, but unfortunately, it, it's not enough. This game has the most, the best support that any any game I've ever seen, any online game I've ever seen, ever and ever played. This game has the best support. You know, with patches, with addressing issues, they do a very nice job and do it very quickly and timely. However, having the best support does not mean you have a great, uh, the best game. So, like this game, they have kind of a subpar game. But the best support. But Modern Warfare 2 had a much better game and pretty shitty support. Let's face it, Infinity War didn't really do a whole lot. And then, of course, they broke up. Um, and unfortunately, the better game and the shittier support will win 9 times out of 10 versus the uh, shittier game, better support. Um, that's just the nature of the beast. Uh, unfortunately, that's just the way it is. Now, if if, Modern War, if Battlefield 3 can maintain a great support line, also be a great game, it's going to be really tough to beat. However, on the flip side of that, if, if this new Modern Warfare 3 looks like it's supposed to be like Modern Warfare 2, but better, cleaned up more, uh, and then have great support, that's going to be tough to beat. So it's going to be really interesting to see what happens this November, and I'm looking forward to it, uh, because there's going to be two great games, especially on top of that, more games coming out. Uh, on top of my head is the new Batman, uh, assign uh, what is Arkham um, City or whatever that one, new one's going to be called, and that looks phenomenal. So, and then there's, I know there's others, and I can't think of the top of my head what else is coming out, but those games look really great on top of these two um, first-person shooters that are coming out. And now let's get into one other topic before we close out here because we're getting close on eight minutes here, and I got a little about a little, a little less than ten minutes, uh, a little less than eleven minutes. Is this uh, when we were playing this particular match? Right before it started, we were—I was talking to Tony because he's in here. Why not the Tiger? Uh, he went to the Padre games this past evening, and I asked him how was it, who won. And he was talking to me about it, whatever. And as soon as this guy, other guy, got in, he just started talking shit. Oh, you suck! Shut up! Blah blah, blah. you know that kind of thing. No, no reason. They just did it to do it. Um, from the moment he got in until the start match started, he just kept saying stuff, um, and I find that funny. I find that funny um, that people think it's 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 safe, I guess, to say um, to talk shit, especially when they start talking about things that they really shouldn't be talking about that they otherwise would not say to anybody's face, like people white guy people saying the n word to black guys or anybody else, or saying mixed racial slurs to other uh, uh, ethnic groups that they wouldn't normally say in front of people's faces because they get their ass kicked. And it's just funny how they find this area, this gaming lobby area, is um, a safe zone and okay to do it because they know, they know there's no retribution at it. They can say whatever they want, and they don't know who you are. You don't know who they are, and it's just words. Um, and normally people wouldn't say these type of things to people's faces, and I'm sure there's, there's exceptions to that. But I just found it kind of funny to see these guys do that, especially this guy. Just talk shit to everybody and anybody that was talking. And apparently even on his... Uh, team when he was playing he's, he was still talking shit but I wonder if he talks shit all the time like that but he's, so it's just kind of funny it's not really bullying or anything like that it's just talking trash uh, especially um, you know really controversial trash sometimes and um, I guess you know I talk trash sometimes and probably more times than I probably should and I usually try to let my game talk be my trash talking um, but as of late, my gaming my gaming skills have really gone downhill. <laughs> I don't know what I need to do, but I, I just need, I probably just need to play more than I do um, to get that back. Because I used to be a lot better than this. Uh, so I don't know. 
So, I, you know, I wanted to bring that up. Tell me what you guys think about the whole trash talking, especially in this game, in, in between lobbies. Uh, what people do. Um, and tell me what you guys think about it. We'll have a conversation like that. And since I'm now back in town, I'll check my emails and things like that. And in the comments, and we'll, we'll talk about it. Alright, guys, that's about it. This match is pretty much down to it. We win it, I mean, pretty handily, but it was pretty entertaining, at least in the beginning part. Um, but a lot of fast action with the ground war and stuff like that. And once I get my pictures going, I will have um, uh, an update with the whole bo my Boston trip and things like that. So I will catch you guys in my next video. Take care, guys.